what's up everyone as you can see from my emblem crota came out this past friday and a ton of good memories and nostalgia hit me that night let me tell you it was a hell of a ride i didn't get day one sadly my first team that was my clan team we got all the way to crota within six to eight hours but then we got off because we were just deathly tired it was like 4 a.m in our time and we were just like we're done huh? Obama. <laughs> Oh, I just got, Dude, I think what? I just got. The next day I did LFG, got R8 teams, and then I finally found this really good team, which then I was up the whole night last night. And with that team, we got the final stand at least 10 times within that night. So sadly, I did not get day one, but it was still fun none nonetheless. And it reminds me a lot of Destiny 1, which I loved that game as well. But either way, the loot is great from this raid. And now that contest is over on the recording of this video, Make sure to go grab that amazing armor from the raid and also the amazing weapons and the great rolls you can get on them. But either way, today I got a build for you guys over the new Weave Walker aspect on Warlock. This aspect is actually really good and will 100% keep you alive in high level content in certain situations where you're about to die. We'll get more into that aspect very soon, but if you guys enjoy this video and want to see more from me, make sure to go check out my other builds on my channel. I posted a new Banner of War aspect for Strand Titan, so if you're interested in that, make sure to go check out that video. Also, leave a like and subscribe if you really enjoy this content. Thank you for being here, and I hope you guys enjoy the video. Today, we're going to be on the Strand subclass for Warlock, the Broodweaver, and also we're going to be using the Exotics, the Swarmers. If you don't know the Swarmers, basically what they do is when you destroy a Tangle that you create, it will spawn two Threadlings. Your Threadlings will unravel targets that they damage. Since Tangles spawn from debuff targets with Strand, it will just keep spawning Tangles when your cooldown is done, so it's a big endless loop with this exotic. We're going to be tying even more stuff with the Tangle when we get to the aspects. Speaking of the aspects, let's get into the subclass. For the super, we got the Needle Storm. This is a one-off super, and it actually does a lot of damage if you can hit all the projectiles on a single target, especially a boss. These little needles that you throw out of your hands will also spawn Threadlings, so if you can, you can also use it on a pack of enemies if you really want to, to kill them even faster. For the abilities of this build, we're going to be using the Healing Rift. This will just heal us when we need it. And also with our mods, we'll have a way to regenerate this faster. We only have one melee with this subclass, it's the Arcane Needle. When you hit enemies, it will track them and also it will unravel them. But with this melee, you're not going to be using this offensively, we're going to be using this defensively. And I'll explain why very soon. For the grenade, we have the Threading Grenade. When you throw this, it basically is kind of like a skip grenade on arc, and it will spawn three projectiles, which will turn it into Threadlings. We're going all out with Threadlings in this build, so this is just a really good grenade for this build. For the aspects, we have the new one, the Weave Walk. Basically, it's kind of like Icarus Dash, but you're not really having to dodge in air. But what you do with this aspect is when you're in the air, you will dodge with your air move button, and you'll enter the Weave. Everything will go quiet around you, you'll turn invisible, and also when you're moving around, you will generate Threadlings. You will also get a damage resist of a whopping 90%. Also with the Weave Walk, it really doesn't say this in the description, but this all ties around your melee charges. To deactivate from the Weave, you basically just jump up again, push your air move, and you'll get out of the Weave. You'll still have your Threadlings perched. This is very good, especially if you're about to die in a situation and you're stuck in a corner. You can just pop this and get away. It's basically just like the Invis Hunter, but just for Warlocks. And also another part of the weave, when you're in the weave, you can actually pop your rift and you'll exit the weave instantly. And that's a great way to pair it with the weaver's call aspect. But for me, I just feel like there was not a lot to tie into when we were doing that. So instead, as our second aspect, we're going to be going with the Wanderer. This just got a buff in Season of the Deep, basically increasing the tangled damage and also increasing the radius of the suspend. But basically what this does, your tangles, when you throw them, they'll have more aggressive tracking and it will stick to a target. They'll then explode. And since we have our exotic the swarmers, it'll spawn two threadlings as it does that. And also it'll suspend everything around it. And also the second part of the aspect that we're not gonna be really touching that much is threadling final blows create a tangle. But we already have a lot of unraveling with this build that's going to be spawning a lot of tingles in general so we won't really worry about that but that's just another benefit you can definitely still use the weaver's call basically what this does is when you cast your rift you'll spawn three threadlings and also if you have if you're in the weave you'll spawn five so then when you use your rift you'll spawn eight threadlings instantly and do any damage that you need to towards an enemy this is very good just for general play and if you're just going around a corner you can just go behind enemies and pop your rift and get them pretty low with all the th threadlings that you're going to be spawning but again, for me, I like to spice up my build, so we're going to be going with the Wanderer and tying it in with our exotic. For the fragments of this build, 
We're actually not going to be using Thread of Evolution. I try to tie this in somewhere because obviously the damage from Threadlings is very good. But in Season of Deep, they did get a 30% buff. And this is another 33% buff to Threadlings with this, with this fragment. But I feel like that 30% buff is already just a lot of damage in general. So instead for our first fragment, we went with Thread of Fury. Damaging targets with a Tangle grants melee energy. Since we're going to be spawning a ton of Tangles, we're basically tying it all into Tangles. So we're going to get melee energy from our Tangles. We're going to spawn two Threadlings and we're also we're going to suspend all the targets around the Tangle. And this is either shooting it or throwing it. And this will just help us get our melee energy back because the weave walk aspect all ties into your melee and how many charges you have. So like I said before, we're not going to be using our melee offensively. We're going to be using a defensively. And basically, when you use the weave, it will start using your melee. But since we have three charges, it does last for like around 30 seconds. But yeah, in my testing, I just feel like this is very good and just will help us get our melee energy back for our aspect. For the second fragment, we got Thread of Warding. Picking up an Orb of Power grants a Woven Mail. This is a 60% damage reduction on top of the 90% from Weave Walk. For our third fragment, we have Thread of Generation. Doing damage generates grenade energy. This will just help us give our Threadling grenade back, which is very useful just for more Threadlings. And yes, we only have three fragments with this build because we have Weave Walk on and this only has one fragment slot. Bungie did warn us saying that there will be a couple of aspects in the game when they come out. We'll have one fragment slot and this is definitely one of them. So they might add another one in the future, but we'll see. Here are the full mods. For the helmet for our first mod, we're going to be using Ashes of Assets. Gain bonus super energy on grenade kills. We're going to be generating a lot of Threadling grenades with this build. And our Threadlings do a lot more damage now. So we're going to be getting more super energy just from those Threadlings. For our second mod, we just have Heavy Ammo Finder just to get more Heavy Ammo on the ground. And for our last mod, we have Harmonic Siphon just to get more ores from our Strand Weapon Final Blows. For the Gauntlets, there's more going on. We got Momentum Transfer for our first mod. Causing damage with the grenade reduces your melee cooldown. Again, since we're going to be getting our Threadlings grenades a lot, we're going to be throwing them and we'll get some melee energy back for our weave walks and then we can use our weave more often. For our second mod, we have firepower just to generate some orbs from our threading grenades. For our last mod on our gauntlets, we have a grenade kickstart. With this build, we'll have four stacks of armor charge. So depending on how many armor charges you have, this will give you that much amount of grenade energy back. For our chest piece, we have charged up as a first mod. Increases the maximum number of stacks of armor charge you can carry by one. That's all I was saying that we can stack up four armor charges with this build instead of just three. In our last two mods, you can use any resist mods you want. For our boots, we're going to be using stacks and stacks. Picking up armor power grants you one additional stack of armor charge. I love this mod so much. You probably will see it in every build I make. Basically, what this is saying is every time you pick up an orb of power, you'll get two stacks of armor charges instead of just one. So to get to four stacks, you just need to pick up two orbs instead of four. For our second mod, we have Insulation. You could probably switch this out for Recuperation if you just don't really care about your Rift that much and you just want to get health just on every orb pickup that we do. Recuperation, basically what it does is replenishes health each time you pick up orb power. This is just instant healing. Both Insulation reduces your class ability cooldown each time you pick up orb power. So basically our healing rift, every time we pick up orbs of power, it will give us more healing rift energy. Then we have Innervation, it reduces your grenade cooldown each time you pick up an orb of power. So every time we pick up those orbs from our threading grenades, it will give us more grenade energy back to throw more. For our bond, we have Reaper as our first mod. After using your class ability, your next weapon final blow spawns an orb of power. So every time you pop your rift or your healing rift, in that first kill that you get after popping your rift, you'll get an orb of power spawning on that enemy. This will just help with our armor charges and also just getting them back our grenade and our class ability a little bit more. For our second mod on our bond, we have Powerful Attraction, so every time we pop our class ability, it will pick up any orbs that are nearby. Then we have Bomber, reduces your grenade cooldown when using your class ability, so every time we use our class ability, we'll get a chunk of our grenade energy back. For the weapons of this build, you can use any weapons you really want to. One of my favorites is actually the Immortal, with Surplus and Hatchling. Also, you can use like Quicksilver Storm, you can even use Osteo's Trigger if you want to. But a fun combo I'm actually enjoying right now, in high level content, is actually Quicksilver Storm, any fusion or any special you really like, like forbearance as well, and then the circular logic, with demolitionist especially. But for low level content, I just like using immortal and just any sword or any machine gun, just because the hatchling is just fun to use, especially for level low level content. And also the new quarter weapons just came out, 
Like Fang of Yu. I got lucky with this roll, Rabbit Hit Hatchling. And also there's a shotgun that's also strand. But again, you can use any weapons you really want to. Just make sure whatever weapons you're using to switch your siphon mount on your helmet. But again, it is beneficial to use a strand weapon within this build, which we'll get into it very soon, which will tie into our artifact mods. Speaking of artifact mods, there's some I do want to talk about. The first one being elemental muni munitions. Combined final blows with tangles or elemental orbs have a chance to generate heavy ammo or special ammo. Since we're beefing up our tangles with this build, you will probably get a lot of heavy and special with this build. You can also do refreshing pickups. Picking up a tangle grants energy to your least powered ability. This will just help get your abilities back faster every time you pick up a tangle, which will be a lot. And also we have communal pickups. When an ally destroys or picks up your tangle, the tangle cooldown is reduced by 5 seconds and also you gain a bonus damage with your weapons that's matching your subclass, so a strand weapons, for 10 seconds. This is very good especially if you have that really annoying teammate who just pick us, picks up your tangles and just throws them or even shoots them. You'll get a lower cooldown and also you get a damage buff. There's two more I do want to talk about is monochromatic maestro dealing elemental ability damage increases your matching weapon damage and also your elemental weapon damage increases matching ability damage which the bonus is 10 percent for five seconds we're going to be having a lot of unraveling with this build and also our threadlings will be constantly going out so you get a 10 percent buff to our strength weapons which is very beneficial and also the last one we want to talk about is thanatog tangles strand weapon final blows have a chance to generate a tangle this just helps with the gameplay loop and just to generate more tangles for the gameplay loop of this build, you want to throw your grenade first to get some melee energy back. These threat things will unravel your target and also will spawn a tangle from the unraveling and also the threat thing. The threat things will also spawn orbs on the target's location. You can shoot the tangle or throw the tangle, but just make sure there's enemies around so you get more melee energy back from a threat of fury. Your tangle will also spawn two threat things from our exotic and suspend all targets in the radius. And when you're in a sticky situation, jump in the air, use your air move ability to enter the weave walk. This will turn you invisible from all enemies and will also generate your throwlings on you while also giving you a 90% damage reduction to everything while you're in the weave. Go to a safe spot and jump again and use your air move again. This will exit you from the weave and you'll have five perched throwlings on you. Pick up any orbs you see on the ground and also use your grenade as much as possible to make more orbs and generate more melee energy. And while you're picking up those orbs, you'll get a 60% damage reduction from our threat of warding. And you're unraveling and all the threadlings will be doing more damage, so you're going to be generating your grenade energy very fast through threat of generation. But other than that, that's really it for the build. It's a very simple build, but very effective and also very fun in my opinion. I hope you guys enjoy this just as much as I do. If you made it this far into the video, I appreciate you and let me know how you like this build. The dim link will be in the video description. Thank you for watching and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.